Hi, I'm Anshu Patel. I work for the Institute of Marine Engineering, Science and Technology, and we're very glad to be supporting Seafarers UK for Seafarers Awareness Week. A key theme of the week this year is young seafarers, the new crew members and potential officers coming through to uphold Britain's long and vital seafaring tradition. This is Anthem of the Seas one of the giant cruise liners that are the pride of the Royal Caribbean fleet. 5,000 passengers, 1,500 crew, ranging in age and experience from long-serving seafarers to newly qualified officers and cadets. My name is Robert McInlang, I'm a deck cadet from Vancouver, Canada and I work aboard Royal Caribbean's Anthem of the Seas. I'm uh, Second Officer Matthew Pickett from Surrey, England and I'm working here on board Anthem of the Seas. I've always wanted to work on the sea, specifically in seafaring, and I've started sailing when I was very young and throughout my life I've been tied to the water, kayaking going to university, studying fisheries, and then eventually I looked towards larger ships and decided I really would like to do that. So I joined up with a mega yacht for a while and then eventually with the school program that I'm currently in, and here I am. For me, the best part of the job would definitely be the fact that every day is different. You're in a different part of the world. You have different situations happening all the time. Really exciting, fast-paced environment. That's definitely, for me, the best part of the job. Come on board. What do you think of the environment, Mark? It's fantastic. Exciting, isn't it? I hope. Currently, I'm a deck cadet on board, and I would like to become a navigational officer one day, hopefully a captain. And just by working on the bridge, working with plotting routes on charts, and being here for arrivals, departures, will really help me get towards my goal. Currently I'm in a four-year program, so half the time is spent at sea and half the time in, in a classroom. And for the classroom we learn just the basic seamanship, navigation skills, and then which can be applied once I go to sea. On board I can be here for as long as six months at a time, so quite a long time. But throughout the time I'm in deep training, learning exactly how to become a navigational officer. someone asked me whether or not they should take a, a job as a seafarer, whether they should pursue this career choice, I would say 100% go ahead. I would recommend it very, very highly. You get to travel the world, you get to work with amazing people, and really to see all of this, it's absolutely wonderful. Of course, as big as the cruise business is, at the heart of all seafaring is leadership, the classic role of the Merchant Navy officer. And here, the UK punches well above its weight with internationally respected training on offer to British and overseas students. When Merchant Navy cadet Georgia Atkins takes command of her first ship, it'll be just a bit bigger than this. Here at Warsash Maritime Academy, Georgia and her fellow students are using an exact scale model of a giant bulk carrier to help them get to grips with the complex business of ship handling all part of the learning curve. It initially was not my career choice, but my father, he got a career at sea and on cruise ships. So from a young age, I'd sail with him. I was able to go on the bridge lot, meet the captain. And one day we were maneuvering in the Caribbean and it just 
clicked, I just kind of knew watching the captain manoeuvre the ship that this is what I wanted to do. So there's your speed anticipated through the water, yeah. okay, and there's your ground speed as well. Okay. So you see you've got a little bit of... But though seafaring runs in the family for Georgia, serious study is still essential. Auto. You need to press auto here, mm -hmm. and then the ship will then steer whatever you've got set in here. Okay. Okay. I think the most challenging part for me has been bringing the academic to the physical side of the job, so combining the two. So deep breath in. Safety at sea is absolutely crucial. And that can literally mean going into the fire to learn how to beat one of the worst hazards any seafarer can face. That was great. Good. Good. I feel like a real firefighter. <laughs> I'm learning the career that I know I want to spend my life doing. When I was at sea, obviously they're there to teach you and train you, but also they've ended up being like a family to you because you are working with them for such long periods of time. The friendships you make here at Warsash, everyone is going in the same career, they're all going in the same direction as you, so you know that these are now friends forever. The Royal Navy, the UK's senior service, has long had excellent training too, for officers, ratings and reservists, and that tradition is alive and well in 2015. This is a Type 23 frigate, a multi-purpose warship, workhorse of the Royal Navy. Today, HMS Northumberland is under the eagle eye of Flag Officer Sea Training and his team being put through her paces. The ship is also testing the skills of a group of young engineering trainees, finding their feet as new recruits, and finding out too what life in Britain's world-renowned senior service is all about. Well, I chose engineering because it intrigued me. My interest lies in the arts, in the arts like creating things, being innovative, thinking out of the box to try to solve something. So I thought that engineering was close to what I like to do. And what also um, interested me is the sea, because I'm from Fiji, an island, so is Great Britain. Um, so I took the opportunity. And after basic training, I did 30 weeks at HMS Sultan in Gosport, learning the fundamentals of marine engineering, learning to try and fix something or try and put something together, learning a different system. So, and then from there, I joined the engineering training squadron here in Devonport. And the, this squadron gives you the opportunity for whatever shape's available to get on board and see what you've done, uh, put it into practice. It gives you that feeling of achievement, like, yes, I've done it, and then you become confident, and then you become competent. Clear range, Palm Fiwo, clear range to port. Carry on at function P1. All the guns on board need maintaining, as well as testing, to be sure they work well and safely whenever they're needed and several of the engineering trainees aboard HMS Northumberland are making a speciality of this sharp end of the ship's work. Uh, we're working on the port minigun. It fires 3,000 rounds a minute towards the incoming craft. Could sink a small craft realistically with the amount of rounds that I could fire off in a minute. I've always liked the sea. I live near the sea myself. So I've always liked it. to go down. I like the sea, I like the sun. And I thought, why not, why not join the ship? Why not join the Navy? In a ship, Everyone depends on everyone else, like in this man overboard drill. But in truth, in every day and in every way, for Beatrice and Aaron, working together is key to the job and to their future in the Royal Navy. 
you, be, you become more resourceful, adapt more quickly to different environments. You, you also make new friends and everyone's got that instinct, that natural instinct that, you know, should anything happen, you're there. You're the first one to the scene, you're always there to help, which is what the Royal Navy is all about. The best part is knowing that you've achieved something that potentially you thought you could have never achieved and then it was something you thought that you never had in your head or you, you, you would never be able to do and eventually you've done it. If someone had come up to me and asked me, should I join the Royal Navy? I would have said to them, why not? Get out of your comfort zone. Be someone. <laughs>
Without these get it done boats and their skilled skippers and crew, we wouldn't get very far and the UK's huge investment in offshore wind farms would be unsustainable. The UK is world leader in offshore wind farms, with over 1,200 turbines installed and more on the way. The hope is that these turbines will help deliver ambitious renewable energy targets set by successive governments. The certainty is they'll need maintenance, repair and replacement. And that's where workboats like Arvon Menai come in. Multitasking across offshore industries and offering bright and wide career prospects for trainees like Jack Owen. What I didn't expect was the size of the UK workboat industry and all the operations they're involved in. Um, anything from wind farm, energy, construction, there's a lot out there. Uh, I saved it and self-sponsored a lot of my basic offshore safety um, courses and yeah I was just keen to get offshore so, so just persistence that's the key. Work boating means turning out in all weathers including this blustery spray laden day in Boulogne but Jack rates it and the prospects it brings. The best part of it for me is probably getting to see the world and meeting different people along the way. The most difficult bit is probably periods away from family and loved ones and um, it's always a pleasure to get home after a long trip um, and it helps to have a good crew on board as well keep keep morale high and enjoy your job. Hi Max, uh, you're right. How's the food get Seafaring is massively important for the UK. We depend on maritime industries for the country's international trade as the majority of it is brought in and out by sea. As for the workboats and tugs, these are the workhorses for the marine construction, oil, gas and wind farm industries. They're also important for the harbour and river work and maintaining our country's sea defences. If somebody asks me if they should do seafaring, I'll tell them it's definitely a challenging but rewarding career. Um, there's endless opportunities out there.